Hello and welcome back to Energizing Life with AKR Fitness. I am your host, Jace, and I've got the usual suspects, Mike. Hello. And Lindsay. Hello. How are we doing, folks? Doing really well. well season four. Season four. That came well. round, eh? That came round. Flies, flies in. How are you feeling about it? Yeah, good. A little less stressed, more confident. Hmm. Happy to. Have you listened back season three? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. Thanks for being a good listener there. Mike, what about you? How are you feeling about it? Yeah, good. As, as always, ready to go, ready to go on and, and cover maybe a different topic, chat about some new things nice. and share some value, hopefully, with the listeners. I'll tell you what, since you've started mentioning it, give us a quick intro. What's coming up in season four? Well, you know, in the last, the last season, we're, we're talking mostly motivational sort of concepts. This time, we're going to take a bit more of a troubleshooting sort of vibe. So dealing with setbacks and injury as we get close to the December, in a, in a number of weeks' time, we're going to um, <laughs> He's talk very about, reluctant to say festive period. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we're going to talk about managing that, that sort of festive period. We're going to have three more member interviews. Again, diving into some stories of difficulties, setbacks. We're even going to talk a little bit about managing time and, and things like that, fitting exercise in, into our lives and things like that. So hopefully some good stuff for yeah. everybody listening and exciting exciting people coming on for the member interviews as well yeah some good stories i think stories. really good stories so that's what's coming up in season four but today we are tackling listener questions so i've got a list of questions come through i'm going to shout them out and you're going to give us the answers and the opinions <laughs> so first up was all about calories and tracking and question number one came through was what are your thoughts on tracking calories tracking calories go do you want to to feel that i think for me there's a place for it Mm -hmm. there's a place for tracking but there's also a place not to track Uh, i think it depends on where you are in your journey with fitness exercise mentally mentally if if you've got the capacity to track and you can track loads of things but when it comes to calories i think the the usual suspects of like my fitness pal it takes up time yeah it's effortful but it does make an impact. So yeah. I think I'm in two minds about tracking as a whole. Yeah. I'm similar, almost like for me, it's, I think everybody at some point should track, like a, should track your finance, track your calories, just to get an idea of where you're at and where you kind of need to go and where you need to be. How deep you track is another ball game altogether. So you can just track calories or you can go calories, macros, and then you can track other things that affect energy balance as well. So it depends how deep you want to go. I think everybody should track at some point. Mike? Yeah, I, I would add to that. Certainly for me and, and many members we've worked with, it, it can be a real educational thing. So I remember coming out of, of my difficulties with binge eating and my relationship with food. Tracking got me away from that good-bad sort of dichotomy with food because I realized that actually I could eat something that I perceived as bad, yeah. but my calories were, were just fine. So, so quantifying it. Yeah, yeah, doing that was, was probably a bit of a turning point for me, actually, yeah. uh, just learning like tracking. And I, I've probably spent times, I think at least a year where I've tracked consistently, but I've got to stage now where I'm not interested. There's, there's I know, yes, if, if I really wanted to, like the biggest difference I could make to my body composition would be if I tracked everything meticulously and stayed on track, but I'm not interested anymore. Like, I think it's just, yeah, it's not for me. And I think for a lot of people, if, if your goal is to have a normal relationship with food, I could with the greatest respect maybe argue that keeping a track of absolutely everything you eat isn't, it, isn't really, really that normal. <laughs> um, that's not to say you shouldn't do it, you know, if it works for you, because you could make the same argument with tracking your time or like you said, Jace, tracking your finances. I think most people, if they gave every penny that they earn a month, if they gave every penny a function for the month and tracked every penny they spent, they'd probably find a few more pennies. <laughs> they'd probably find <laughs> the spend, spend and save their money better. Same with your calories. So again, I'm not saying it's a bad thing to track. It's just for me now, I'm I'd kind feel- of over it it comes and goes with me. It's, it's very much a short term thing. So like I sort of going through a period of heightened mm, exercise, yeah. fitness. If I've got something coming up like a holiday, then I'll have all the will in the world to like, okay, let's just track for four weeks just to sort of 
hone in and get a little bit better. Yeah. But then there's the flip side of it for me on that track. And if I get to the end of the day and I've still got 100 calories left, I'm going to eat that 100 calories. Yeah. And it's like, that's when it starts to play with my mind a little bit. I'm like, the I metrics. don't actually need it, but it's there. So I'll take that last 100. Yeah, the metrics can get a bit, a bit buzzed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're the sort of person that can only eat well when you're tracking and the minute you're not tracking, you're you're going off track. It's almost, a little almost bit of a slightly using tracking for for the wrong reason. If you can't do it without tracking, you need to use the tracking as an education tool to, to teach yourself about right. Yeah, if I eat this, I feel good. If I eat this, I don't feel that good. Yeah, mm -hmm. if I eat but, this much, I hear. So that's that's better. the word though that you, you nailed it there. It's a tool, yeah. and so it's not necessarily if tracking is good or bad. It, it has its uses. Just is it the right tool for the right person at the right mm -hmm. time? Same with stepping on scales. I think I said in a previous show, like I advise one person to weigh themselves every day, yeah, yeah, and yeah. and I advise a different member t to throw their scales away. So yeah. it, it, it's it's about the tool and yeah. and just what the use is. But I, I do think sometimes just that it has that maybe an energy for some people yeah. where like they they need it or they. They can't do without it, or, or conversely, the minute they start tracking, they start finding themselves like you know it, it brings up old dieting mm -hmm. behaviors, and then they start going off track, and there's this angst. So it's it's very much just like, is it the right tool at the right time for the right person for the for, right reason for the right goal for the right yeah. goal? Yeah. We 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 spoke off air a little bit about this off air. How was weird. To <laughs> <laughs> we spoke uh, about the eighty twenty rule and the cost of of tracking and getting lean and, and tell us a little bit the more about that. cost of getting in shape yeah like so again going back to what i said if i if i if i want to get into like movie star shape maybe tracking which movie star maybe, <laughs> maybe track it needs to play a role um and there's lots of them i guess um but it maybe needs to play a role for me but i think for most people you can get most of the benefits with a more relaxed approach like just you know, exercising fairly consistently, eating reasonably well, and you don't need to do all the the extra stuff. Like I think the that extra twenty percent of effort can provide a lot more results, but that's also where you need a lot more discipline and willpower mm -hmm. and focus and everything to get through it. Yeah. So if you can be happy with with where you're at and and do the sort of eighty percent of stuff or maybe um, mucking up the rule for it because the 80 20 is the 20 percent of your effort provides 80 percent of the results and that that's eff effectively mm -hmm. where i'm probably at with a lot of this stuff but for for someone if they want to if they want to get that next level of fitness or physique that's where they probably the, the cost of it is much higher the cost in terms of discipline and focus and effort and the tools they're going to use and they need to change their life like a lot if that's the case yeah you know what I mean? You're very much that dedicated to the cause. The yeah, identity change you need. Yeah. For. Yeah. So, so I think the point we're saying is to to be generally fit and healthy and happy. You can do a certain amount of work, but if you're wanting like mm -hmm. again, say movie star level of physique or fitness or you know super athlete, then there's that there's another whole level of steps which which is probably exponentially more difficult. And if you think about the movie stars, that's their full time job when they're when they're doing that. And they also have people who walk around and slap the dige the digestives out of their hand or something. <laughs> like, nope, not today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when we were, when we were chatting off air, there's that word again. We we went and, we went deep into that eighty twenty rule and the fact that there's eighty twenty rule within the eighty twenty rule within that to eighty twenty rule. Yeah. <laughs> and we were like, so that's four percent minus the two calories. <laughs> I'm, I would say I'm glad I wasn't there for that conversation. <laughs> that was a huge one. Uh, I'm going to keep with the calories and the tracking stuff. And the next question was all about crash diets. I'm, I'm going to leave that completely open, just crash diets. Boom. Yeah. Well, first of all, there's the word crash. So like you, that can mean all sorts of different things. But if we're talking about going on a diet, let's see, because I guess what's the difference between a, a diet and a crash diet other than just using the word diet for what you eat? Severity. But, but so yeah. let's say going on a, going on a diet, right? My attitude to it is there's there's no problem with even going on crash diets unless they get in the way of you learning how to live a normal fit and healthy and happy life. So 
the mistake that people do is they go from diet to diet to diet to diet and they never learn the skills of staying on track consistently. So that's, you know, we've spoken, I think, in season one about like our whole philosophy is more about helping people have a, a normal, happy relationship with food and exercise so they can feel fit and healthy without all of the angst. Mm. Now, I think if someone has got most of that sort of skill set in place, then if they want to go on a diet ahead of a wedding, an event, you know, we can talk about you yeah. in a sec, yeah. uh, then then there's, there's a total place for it because mm -hmm. you can go on that diet and then you can just go back to normal on track. But the, I think for every diet a person goes on, if they don't understand the tools of staying on track normally, they pick up a little bit of baggage, especially if it's more... Or a lot. <laughs> well, the more quirky the diet, the more baggage they pick yeah. up. So if the, ba if the diet is like zero carbs, there's probably some sort of thing that begins to grow in them where where carbs is a, a thing I, like I, I had a, uh, someone I trained years ago who went on like a an all shakes sort of diet and they felt like they were never the same after it they couldn't they couldn't drink shakes anymore or they tried to do the diet like a subsequent time and they couldn't get past one day it was just like there was too much baggage involved in it so I think the main thing that people have to do is is again just learn the basics of staying on track normally good days and bad mm -hmm. days you know coasting through yeah. And then you've got a platform from which to go on a, a diet at the right time. Yeah. yeah. I would say you see it all the time, especially with the stop start diets throughout the years. And we've got a lot of members that are plus 50 and they've all went through that cycle and still trying to get rid of the baggage that they've collected through the years. And it's maybe taken them four or five years of being with us to start to understand that okay, that's not the normal way, this is, and it's okay to then, okay, I've got a wedding coming up, so mm. I'll, now I've got the basics, the foundations, I understand health, nutrition, exercise, now I can push on yeah. and, and go for that extra calories yeah. off or whatever. And, and do you know what, though, I think some people love that, like that feeling of, here we go, I'm on another yeah. diet, and, but it, it, it gets really tiring. It gets to the point where you're like, I've done this, like, I've done this too many times before, the and mental energy that you have to use, like, it is it was almost not yeah. really worth it. Yeah, and I, I think that angst is the best word I have for it, for just this feeling around. Even some people, as soon as they, they pull out their bathroom scales, or again, as soon as they reactivate their MyFitnessPal, or any of these sort of dieting type behavior, there's just like a bit of energy or mm -hmm. something. And then they find themselves, we spoke about self-sabotage a few episodes back, they, then they find themselves beginning to do this weird sabotaging behavior. It's inexplicable because two weeks ago when they were not on a diet, yeah. they were eating like a, an adult. And then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. all right, I'm setting this goal, I'm gonna go again. And all of a sudden they find themselves shooting themselves well, on the food the, again. I say they, like I've been yeah. there, it's yeah. like me. It's the restriction on it as well. It's just constant pressure, it feels like. Yeah, and the, the anxiety of the whole thing can get on top of you quite a lot. Yeah, it's, and and do you know what, it's, it's not even just weight loss I, I remember years ago like i don't know how many guys have, have done this where you're like right i'm bulking and you spend a number of weeks like eating a heap of food and try to get big and then you're on a cutting phase um and right now i'm gonna get lean and it's just another way to, you just took a, a snapshot into uh, my youth there <laughs> <laughs> but it is it's just like i remember one of my friends saying to me like what is the, what's the point in that like you're just always on a diet you're always and and what what blokes do if you're anything like me and some of my pals have done you, you decide right i'm gonna i'm gonna try and put on some muscle so you eat more food and you know you're you're training hard with the weights but you get to the point where you're like you you need to probably do a year of that mm. if to really get some muscle on but probably six weeks in you're like do you know what? i'm feeling a bit bulky i'm feeling a bit fat now i think i'm gonna go a cut and so you never go long enough in either bucking bulking or cutting to get the result you want. And you just end up flip flopping around. And for me, I find that a pain in the backside because you're all of a sudden my jeans are getting too tight. Yeah. And then I go the other way and everything's a bit too loose. And it's like, this is- Even just listening to that is like oh, effortful. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, like exhausted. <laughs> the best way is just like make peace with your body a bit and then just try and stay on track generally and make small improvements for a longer period of time. That's that tends to be where my mind is at. Mm -hmm. Although, having said that, every now and then there's that surge and thinking, right, maybe I should do maybe something. I should get totally in the best shape of my life. <laughs> yeah, should I do it? But the, the funny thing is, the minute I start taking steps to to do that, I'll, 
I muck it up. It's it's just yeah. it's an interesting thing. But let's talk about your yeah, yours. Yeah, one, so Jace. I'm literally in in a fat loss phase. So and it's nearing the point where I'm about to almost crash diet for two weeks. However, I'm not just going to go straight into it. I've got things prepared on the other side of it, and I'll be able to reverse diet back out of it. But in, to get to the crash diet, I haven't. I'm not just going straight into it. I've actually I did a whole month of really focusing on habits and portion size and keeping the control, and then I did another month of starting to track calories, and then I've done a final month. Just finished another month of doing tracking macros and water intake and steps and pretty much every other quantifiable measurement in my life at the second. The, the crash diet coming up is it's a pro for me. Like I know it's only gonna be a very, very short time. I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna, I say I'm not gonna get hung up on it. I've got you guys to keep me, uh, keep me from getting hung up on it. But what does that look like though? What does the next two weeks look like? The next two weeks, my, my water intake will shoot up to about four liters or something, just to make sure that I'm not keeping any water in. The my carbs will lower down to below 200 grams for the first time in, I don't know, five years, six years, <laughs> which I'm going to be hungry with it. I am fully accept that. Again, I realize I need to be hungry. It's kind of the, the, the point. But it's, yeah, the rest of it, my, my proteins will go up, my fats will go up, and I'll try and maintain eating in and around my training so I've got plenty of energy for that, and then I can kind of just loaf out at night time. But I'm fully, fully aware of the, the pros and cons that are coming. And it's just, I'm going, to, I'm going to journal it to try and keep myself from going off into the deep end and having to have a long fight back with it. I've been there before and you're like, right, now I'm just not eating any carbs again because I like the way my skin feels quite thin with it. You're like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> I think that, prepared. I think the important thing to, to reinforce though is Jace isn't going from the couch to this. No. Jace has been exercising consistently for years and years and generally eating normally. Yeah. And now he's just wanting to have a surge, I guess. Yeah. So what's, what's driving that just now? So the big, big surge, I've got my wedding in two weeks. I'm also 30 near the end of October. So, well, this will be out and I'll be 30. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Woo. So, yeah, thank you. Happy <laughs> birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and also... Um, it's not just this two week. You've been you've been gradually building. Yeah, I've up been to gradually this as well. building this up. Yeah. So for what six weeks maybe? Eight. Eight weeks. Eight weeks now. So it's coming. This is just past the eighth week. So another two weeks, and I'll uh, slowly. And, and how have you it. found that process of staying on track? And you know, like I said, not throwing the toys out the pram and sabotaging it and things like that. It's been a challenge. The biggest, the biggest and best thing I actually did was post it every day on my Instagram what I was doing because that actually helped keep me accountable. It made sure I was tracking. It made sure I was, you know, I don't want to jump on Instagram and be like, oh, I'll put on five kilos because I went and <laughs> had three chippers and spoke to a guy at the gym who took me out and toured all the chippers in Aberdeen. But we, it's, it was a challenge to start with. Obviously, you have to get used to mm -hmm. tracking. You have to get used to bringing your phone out, scanning things in. You have to build that habit and there'll be days I'll get to the end and be like, oh, I didn't put anything in my fitness pal. And then you look at it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to interrupt the street. My fitness pal gives you a little, mm -hmm. well done, you've, you've tracked for seven days in a row or whatever it might be. So when something interrupts it, you're like, oh, no, it's, I've interrupted it or I've not crossed off that day. So it's been up and down. It, oh, 100% yeah. been up and down, yeah. As is my weight. My weight never once just went down. It's been a roller coaster with that. To the point where I actually, I remember saying on Instagram, I was like, I'm not entirely sure this is working. <laughs> because I'm, I'm eating way less than what I used to. And I'm not even shifting weight. But then all of a sudden, I would have this massive drop. Or I would look dramatically different like my cheekbones would come back or something but oh, well maybe actually this is working mm -hmm. but it, it is really hard and i found the initial stage at this point now I'm, I'm in it and i'm in deep in it i'm i'm okay i'm fine i understand the body fluctuations i know what foods will, will sort of inflame me a little bit and i'll look slightly different with it but at the start when i didn't get that drop every single day i was annoyed mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm trying really hard here and then you, you obviously have to remember all the different 
moving parts, one to the body and two to digestion, water intake. So it just became, it became relearning everything that I'd learned. And it's things that obviously we coach and we teach and we, we go on about, but sometimes you just have to sit down and think, right, come on, <laughs> mm-hmm. think about it. Why aren't you losing? Well, you're not losing because, well, yeah, it's, it's that, that sort of detaching the emotional side of it yeah. from, from like the, the rational, the factual And that's side probably why, why people self-sabotage, if you like, because they see that it's not moving for three or four days and they think, what's the point? Yeah. That's probably where yeah. it goes. Yeah. I think, so. I guess to wrap this, this bit up, for the person listening, I think if you're in a place where you've done diet after diet after diet, or you're not on track, or you've never consistently got a period where you're eating well and exercising, I think that's the place that you have to start. Almost like, I don't want to say this like 100%, but almost like that's a prerequisite for yeah. a diet. Like you almost have to qualify for going on a mm-hmm. diet because otherwise it's just the stop-start cycle. Repeat, 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 repeat. Yeah. It was like at the very start, I wanted to make sure I was hitting all the basics. Yeah. Can I get my bed on time? Can I eat protein with every meal? Am I eating veg with every meal? Because I know that keeps, mm-hmm. can keep me full. So I did a full month of that just to make sure that I was nailing the basics. And then I just layered on top of it mm-hmm. from there. Yeah, layers. Good, good way of thinking about it. Uh, just thinking of sort of fat loss there. The next question is actually about fat loss. So when you're in a calorie deficit and you lose weight slash fat, where does it go? Does the body just burn fat as energy, goes as waste, or I've even heard that you breathe it out? Who's tackling it? I like this question. I like it because it's a sort of thing. I like it because it's got an emoji in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a sort of thing, it's the sort of thing I, I like to think about, you know, just getting curious about, about things, and it shows that this person's actually thinking about this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so the short answer is, yeah, you, you breathe it out and you pee it out. Um, slightly longer answer without turning it into a physiology sort of lecture. And I'll try and keep it basic in case there are some physiology nerds listening in <laughs> who are going to call me out. But you've got, you eat, essentially you're eating protein, fat, and carbohydrate. Those things all get broken down in the body. So protein becomes amino acids, which is the, the building blocks can for... You, can you tell me all eight of them? No. <laughs> um, carbohydrate becomes... Glucose, yeah. effectively, which is which is funny when people talk about like not eating sugar because all carbs ultimately become sugar in the body, um, and the fat you eat gets broken down into fatty acids, and ultimately, so the the energy we use is this molecule called ATP. So these the protein, fat, and carbs get used. The 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 amino acids in particular can get used for all different roles in the body, structurally and things yeah. like that. But when they get, uh, and everything actually gets stored or used. But when it gets used, it'll get turned, it'll it'll become ATP, ATP which is the, the, call it the energy molecule, mm-hmm. like molecule to make that simple. So every little, it, it's easy to forget your body is a buzz of activity constantly, even when you're sleeping. Think about all the blood going around. Think about all like the cells dividing and growing and changing. And, and so all of that is fueled by this ATP. And the byproducts, when ATP gets broken down, I don't know how I'm going to concentrate when I say that, <laughs> is water and carbon dioxide. Yeah. And so the carbon dioxide we breathe, out. we breathe out. And the byproducts of the amino acids they get broken down into nitrogen, which then gets converted to urea, which then gets excreted in our urine. So yeah, you're, you're, when you're burning fat, you're literally breathing, breathing it, out. it out and you're peeing it out, essentially. So it's, it's, it's weird when, it you, when weird you think when you about think things about that way. That. Um, it's, it's a good a, question. It's, it's a good question, yeah. yeah. It got me thinking. I was like, what's this again? <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking there, there's a, there must be tests, probably in Loughborough or something, where you put on a mask and it'll tell you, what you're breathing out at that time. Like, are you breathing out fat or? Well, no, because it's still, it's always carbon, carbon dioxide, dioxide by that time. And I'm sorry, you're, always, yes, uh, you're always breathing out carbon mm-hmm. dioxide. But what, which energy source you're using at that point? Yeah, well, they can do that because, yeah, depending on, on your act- type, type of activity you do and the composition of your diet, yeah. you could be burning more fat at a given time rather than, 
than carbohydrate. It's fine, is it? We can, um, go, we can go in there. So. <laughs> mm. But it's interesting because calories is, is a unit of heat, right? It's not, it's not a unit they of, actually, of energy. Calorie was invented by uh, trains. That's what they used in order to, to they, they needed a, a measure of heat, a unit of heat in order to know how fast trains can go. Hmm. And that's really? how they came up with it, yeah. Oh, it'll be uh, steam trains. Steam trains, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because a calorie is the how amount of heat one produced to heat one litre of water one by one, yeah. um, one degree. One degree, yeah. And then so when when ATP is used, though, it isn't, it isn't 100% efficient. I think it's only 40% gets used and then 60% is lost as heat. Yeah. Um, and so that's how... That's how, like, the mass, the, f- the food we eat is is linked to the ATP production, and the ATP production is linked to the heat that's generated, which is how that measurement of heat, the calorie, links to the energy. You've just blown that makes people's sense. minds. <laughs> Everybody be listening like, hold on a minute. I'm not rewind, sure. rewind, rewind, rewind. I'm not sure if I even made sense to myself <laughs> there. So. Well, listen back a bit. None of us made sense there. No, no. Someone, if you're listening, physiology people, write in and tell us otherwise. <laughs> tell me what I went wrong. Oh, the, okay. uh, the next few questions actually were all about exercise and aging or exercising with an illness or injuries. Um, and I think we're going to tackle that in a little bit. Yeah, we'll, we'll touch on some of that stuff. Um, I think some of them, like, yeah, so people wrote in with questions about oh, exercise with a, with a chronic illness. Uh, talk about exercise and aging and we can touch on that a little bit just now some of it we might we might get to in a, in a separate episode um i think the, the the short answer is like most of the time exercise helps like with with aging i think i think uh the the biological term is senescence i think for that's like biological aging and i think too often we just associate getting older with with um, deterioration, right? But when they when they go study like hunter gatherer t- tribes that are living yeah. in their natural habitat, like the the grandparents are as active as everybody else. They play important roles, looking after kids, like keeping active, and they're as healthy. They're not got any more body fat, things like that, and so it's. A lot of this stuff isn't true senescence, it's inactivity. Like we stop doing stuff. Now there are things like the age associated loss of muscle mass does happen, but guess what? By lifting weights and doing resistance training, mm-hmm. we can limit that. Yeah. There's also power, more to a, a greater degree than muscle mass, we lose power yeah. as we age. So therefore we should we should try and train to keep that. Um but yeah, a lot of the stuff, yes, there, there is true, like, you know what an example of senescence is, is wrinkles, right? So there are changes that occur with aging. Yes. But exercise is as effective, you know, can have, have a role for, for people. Age. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. We, can, we can touch in if there's more, I guess, specific questions in it. We can touch, touch on about it, like, and... I know some people are like, oh, it's, you know, it's different. And like, I feel, I don't know if it's a COVID thing or, or what, um, maybe just not getting holidays over the last couple of years, but I feel in the last couple of years, physically, I've not been quite the same. And everyone, everyone could easily say, ah, that's because you're, you know, you're, you're late thirties now or, or whatever. Um, but so, and, and so what I'm trying to say is I can, I can relate to people who have aches and pains and things like that. But a lot of it is carrying too much weight, being too inactive mm-hmm. or for me, I think I've, I've got so many old injuries, which we can talk about in a future yeah. episode. Um, yeah, two part or that one. It's causing, <laughs> it's causing trouble. Um, I think under the, the exercise umbrella though, like it doesn't need to be intense training, just something like even mobility, like it, you can keep doing mobility, even if it's small movements through the joints as you age, that's going to make you feel better. We all know how good it feels when you do a five minute flow. Oh, yeah. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? No matter what age you are. Yeah. So I think you just need to be able to move it if you can. Yeah. And there are more studies done in seniors, they call them in the American studies, um, than, well, the most popular study groups are college, college people because they're at the unis. 
and the seniors. And there's so many studies to show the benefits of strength training, mm-hmm. of mobility, of like Tai Chi, yeah. Uh, yeah. all these things that, that it doesn't have any less of an effect. Movement um, is medicine. Yeah. 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 Movement is medicine. Um, we do- do you want, do you want, sorry, just, just one, <laughs> one more bit on that because this is an interesting point. Exercise is actually abnormal. Exercise as in formal, deliberate, going to work out my body for no other, no apparent reason is is a bit abnormal. So when I spoke about that, you know, these hunter-gatherers, it would be madness if somebody's gone, do you know what, Dave, I'm just going out for a 5K run. Like, because they, they have to move, they have to move to eat. Yeah. So like there is a part of it, physical activity is like an essential part of life or has been for like countless thousands of years. And that's, and it's the part that is so integrated into life that is, that helps people keep healthy and active as they age. Exercise as in deliberate going to the gym or going for a run is Pain from point. an evolutionary <laughs> point of view. Yeah. Weird. It is totally <laughs> abnormal. So if, if you feel like if, if it feels like not so normal for you, like that's, that's okay. You still have to do it, I think. <laughs> yeah. and, there, and there's loads of components to fitness that you can dabble and train yeah. and try out and yeah. keep yourself moving and taking over with. We, we had a couple of questions on menopause and menstruation. Did I say that right? Um, I think if we're going to do that question, we'll, we'll save it for a full episode, right? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe in a full season. Yeah. Full yeah. season. For different so. topics. We'll, we'll, yeah. There was a lot of questions on it. There so I think it, I think it um, should be its own standalone topic. Yeah. There's a lot of information topics. to go into it. So mm-hmm. we, uh, we're going to do it. We'll do it justice. Yeah. All right. We're going to move on. We're going to do some fun questions. No, no cheating. <laughs> looking at my bit of paper. <laughs> Try to get a head start on the questions. All right. With... Question number one. With the constant evolution of the industry to date, what, in your opinion, has been the most significant and impactful change? Dun, dun, dun. Lance? Lance? I'm going to say that more and more people of all ages and male, female, others can strength train because it was seen that it was just a male dominated thing or an aerobics was female, if you like, yeah. not even that long ago. So I think it's been amazing to see that become global and anybody can do it. Yeah. I think that's a real change. Like that's where I would go with that one. Yeah. The use of barbells and dumbbells yeah, and kettlebells it's for everyone. just now being standard. Yeah. Is, is yeah. Do, do, do you know what else is linked to that then? Because that very change helps change the industry because let's say in the year 2000 or maybe even 2010, if you wanted to open a gym, you needed millions because what a gym looked like was rows and rows of treadmills or cross trainers or whatever, cardio pieces and rows rows and rows of machines. But then what happens is the, the girl who wants to get fit or the guy, they see their favorite, go back to movie stars, they see the movie stars training or their favorite athletes training and they're training with a kettlebell or a, or a suspension trainer or mm-hmm. dumbbells or barbells or whatever. So, so that's what they want to do as well. And then what that does is that requires more coaching. So it causes a shift in the, and it's also, it's more economical to open a gym with three suspension trainers, a rack of kettlebells, a rack of dumbbells, and a sandbag or something like that. And a green bit of turf. And a green, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, but, but that, means, that means more people can open gyms, but also it, it changes the dynam- dynamic of the fitness industry mm-hmm. from this membership model where it's just do it, do it yourself, jump in. Once you're in the gym, you're on your own to an industry where coaching is built in mm-hmm. and service is built in things like that so I think that that shift isn't just a shift in the training but it's a shift in the service and in the industry. Ch- that probably changed the demographic as well yeah and, and the whole thing has because there's because there's now coaching yeah um and it's made it more more accessible to people who previously wouldn't have maybe lifted weights and things mm-hmm. there's probably more more to it even just making coaching more accessible for everyone mm-hmm. yeah and a, a standardized type thing yeah the for me this is going to sound so bizarre but one of the best things I think is the, the, the like Instagram influencers and just Instagram or Facebook 
and the fact that you can get all of this information at the click of a button, okay, some of it's not great. <laughs> some of it you should just, you know, block and delete and, and get rid of them. But there is some good people out there putting out some really good free information mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that can help change your mind on a lot of things. Yeah, that's information. And then also you can add to that, like some of the tech. Yeah. You know, some of the fitness tracking devices, the calorie tracking devices we spoke about earlier, all that sort of stuff. And definitely mm -hmm. has an impact. It's more accessible for everyone. It makes there, it, it, it makes it, yeah, makes everything more accessible. Yeah. And almost slightly easier <laughs> to get involved in. Yeah. The the next question slightly linked. So that was that was a question on what we thought was been the most impactful change. Which fitness myth do you find the funniest slash most bizarre? <laughs> It's a tough one. It is tough. You know, I was I I did get a sneak peek at some of these, and I was trying to think of it. And you look at my bit of paper. The best uh, <laughs> the best story I could come up with was when I was doing my PT course. So this is going back to two thousand and nine, which feels a, a while sure. back. <laughs> but uh, there was a person, and again, this isn't to call anybody out, but there was a p person on the course who was waking up at three in the morning, setting an alarm, name and tune, so he could have. <laughs> A, a spoon of peanut butter in the middle of the night in order to keep his metabolism going and to lose more fat. Okay, one more time, because I think I interrupted. <laughs> Someone got up at 3 a.m. in the middle of the night to have a spoon of peanut butter to keep their metabolism stoked. Yeah, yeah, in order to help burn more fat. Which your and, thoughts on And that? I thought, and, I, and again, you know, th things have moved on in the past, yeah. however, 10, 12 years, whatever it is. But I remember at the time thinking, this, that, that's, that's not isn't, helping. It, isn't that, uh, oh, who was the guy who played Wolverine again? Um, Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman. Is that, not, is that not something he did? He used to get up at three to have a protein shake. I, I don't know. I don't know. I thought it was mad, and there's a couple other reasons, because the reason he was doing it is just literally said, a bloke at the gym told him. Yeah, and typically. also, so I, I think I mentioned before, I did my PT course in Spain, and some of the people every weekend were just going down to the strip and, <laughs> and uh, getting... Uh, you know, getting drunk every weekend. And and this person was one of them. So that, 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 there's a, a bit of a disconnect. Also, though, like you said this before, you're interrupting your sleep pattern to get up, to eat, to go yeah. back. Like, yeah. oh, you're not going to get back yeah. to sleep. I don't get it. So that probably was the more, more bizarre one, that, uh -huh. that at least that I, my memory can, can tell me. Of, of course, people have done lots of weird and wonderful things a lot yeah. of the time, inc including ourselves. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. But that, that, was a, that was a bizarre one. You guys got any? Oh, you, you you just said something there, including ourselves. So what have you done that's <laughs> <laughs> quite bizarre or funny? What have I done that's bizarre? I don't know if, if I guess it depends which lens you're looking through, because the things didn't seem too bizarre at the time, but like fast fasting protocols, which again, I, I still have their place, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, juicing stuff, paleo stuff, like going on a 30 day with no grains, legumes, dairy, yeah. no like man-made sweets or anything, bits and pieces like that. Um, yeah, for me, it's more following gurus and not not looking at the science. Just, oh, that looks quite interesting. Mm -hmm. I think the, the funniest thing I ever did, I used to eat an entire tin of pineapple chunks after every workout. Because it had some special properties. Yeah, so or, I can't remember what. I think it was something to do with insulin and yeah. cortisol. Get, and, getting your glucose up. Yeah, yeah. So we shouldn't get started on Diet Coke then, no? Oh, no. <laughs> well, now you mentioned it. There we go. <laughs> Lynch, no. you got a fitness myth? Probably nothing that I want to say, no. <laughs> like, we could go down the, all of the ridiculous tools and fads of exercise kit and things, but no, I think I'll, I'll leave it there. Without offending anyone, we'll move on. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay. Oh, this is an interesting one. You can only use one piece of equipment in AKR for your workout for a week. Only one piece and the same piece for the week. What would you use and why? Now, I mean, so initially already I'm thinking about this question is, is that like a barbell and plates or is it just a barbell? <laughs> we, need to, we need to clarify. <laughs> we need some rules for this yeah. question. I always think these are these are weird because my immediate response is, why well, why can I only have one piece? Because <laughs> that's, I mean? <laughs> that's, the, <laughs> that's the question. Because that's the question. Honestly, I would 
be original dumbbell. I think you can do everything with a dumbbell. Right. Kettlebell is a bit of a fancy. You can still swing with a dumbbell, snatch, clean, press, pulls. Like, I'm all for the dumbbell. You just need to pick the right weight, don't you? That's yeah. good, yeah. yeah that's the just, just right. Oof. Sticking with dumbbell? I'm sticking with dumbbell. Just pick a sled. Just sled pushes all week <laughs> long. <laughs> 60 minutes of sled pushes. Do five them days slow, away. you can do them fast, you can do them on one a leg. Assault bike. <laughs> I was actually thinking of an assault bike. No, no, no. Um, I'll I, I go dumbbell as well. But again, you need to make sure it's it's got a substantial heaviness to it that you can. Or you just complex everything. Or oh, you just complex I, I pick a mat and just take a, <laughs> take, take a week of stretching and mobility work. <laughs> That's where your hide's at right now. Mike. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> uh, okay. What are the coach's favorite workout tracks? I mean, this is an entire podcast season. <laughs> we could uh, we can release Spotify playlists and go on and go on. Oh, Lindsay's going to come up with some nah. terrible trance music here. Hey, <laughs> that's the only way. <laughs> trance, drum and bass. I'm okay with that. But a specific one would be Silence by Tiesto. There you go. That's if only he was silent, that would be, <laughs> <laughs> <it'd> be better. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mike? I don't know, when I'm lifting weights, I've still, in the last few weeks, just been going back to my Jay-Z faves playlist, which is about four and a half hours long. Can't, That's the can't, actual can't. name of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> On Spotify, folks, look it up. <laughs> Jay-Z faves. Beat Jay-Z. faves. But do you know what, like, I, I, I find it motivational, like, it's it's positive, like, the the way, like, some of these hip-hop artists, like, brag and stuff, I find positive. The the stories of, like... Have you got a line in mind? No, I'm not going to start laughing for ages. <laughs> There's a... The, but the stories from, like, you know, coming from a really hard place and coming from the streets and, you know, Jay-Z was, like, selling drugs and whatever to the, like, I've made it sort of thing. Like, I just... I like that. I think it's good for... They don't make weights. rappers like they used to, eh? Back in yeah. our days. <laughs> yeah. You? Ooh. At the minute, like, I'm, I'm a massive hip hop rap fan. Jay Z, probably one of my all time favorites. But at the minute, I'm going back to skater, emo, punk, right? like Fallout Boy. Nice. There's something that's got a slight scream to it, but not enough that you're like, what is that? I thought you were about to say Spice Girls. <laughs> no, that's, that's my um, that's my special playlist. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> only good, good members get to hear that one. <laughs> Shame for yeah. them. Shame for them. Tell okay, you what, Steps has got a, a, a tune out now. Mm. Some people should just leave it. You know, like you've had your moments. Just, <laughs> just leave it. <laughs> if you like steps, I'm but not. You've run sorry. out of money. <laughs> that, that's why they've run out of money. All right. Anyway, let's wrap this up. The we love getting your questions, folks. And if you do have a question for us and you'd like to email us in, Mike, it is podcast at akrfitness.com. Brilliant. And the hashtag, if you want to post any of this on social media, is Lindsay. Energizing life. Podcast. podcast. Energizing life podcast. Why didn't you say podcast? <laughs> so close every time. <laughs> every single They know time. it's a podcast. <laughs> Could be watching on YouTube. Well, this is true. All right, folks, that is it from us. We are we're happy to be back. We're gonna see you in the next one. See you then.